All right, so let's talk about ionic compounds. Uh, <laughs> All right then, the peanut gallery chimes in. Ionic compounds made with transition metals. So this is where it gets a little more complicated. We all love that word, complicated. Ooh, nice color. Okay, so uh, just recall here. What are the transition metals? Well, they're the metals that are found in what's called the valley of the periodic table. Transition metals are found in the valley. Okay, I wonder if I can quickly find a periodic table to throw in this. Let's just see if I can uh, pop it right in here. Can I? Will it work? Kind of did. Can I shrink it down? Can I shrink you? Are you gonna let me shrink you? No, maybe not. Maybe I can't shrink it. Can I? Aha! I can. Excellent. Great. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. I should have paused that. Uh, okay. So. When we're talking about transition metals, what do we mean? Well, we mean all these guys down in, uh, let's do a color you'll actually be able to see, down in here, okay? Transition metals. I guess uh, they're called transition metals. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing because it's a transition from metals to non-metals across them. Um, here's the staircase. We know that everything to the right is a non-metal and everything to the left is considered metal. We've already learned the chemistry of these guys, okay, and even this group. We know that these form plus one, plus two, and plus three ions for the most part, okay? But what happens here, right? It's not it's not as simple, okay? By the time we get to calcium, okay, we've got um we're down into the fourth shell, and we'll we'll notice that the fourth shell needs to accommodate more than eight electrons, okay? In reality, um, our concept of shells and form models isn't quite right. All right. Yes, it is. All right, you should. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the problem is you can't really tell what types of ions these are going to form just by looking at the periodic table like you can with, with the other groups, like these ones that we've just been mentioning. So what we're going to look at today is, is how some of these form ions. Okay? And the first example we'll talk about is iron. And iron, it turns out, can form two types of ion. Okay? It can either form Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus. So its, it's electron shells are a little more complicated than the picture that we've had of electron shells uh, before. Okay? Bryce, if you can't see, you can just move up to one of these open spots. Then. It'll probably help you out. Um, so you can form two types of ion. So, so what does that mean? That means if, if, say, we were talking about iron oxide, we might not be sure. Remember, oxygen always forms a two negative, right? It can't, it can't form multiple ions like some of the transition metals can. So oxygen, we know, is always going to be a two minus. So what that means is we might be able to form this with oxygen, but we might also be able to form this, okay? Now, you run into problems because in ionic naming, when we're talking about naming, if we just said iron oxide, we probably wouldn't know which of these we were talking about, okay? So just before we go on, we'll, uh, we'll mark off a couple of more um, pretty famous ions that... Uh, that uh, that can form. Okay, so we'll look at uh, 
Actually, let's just make a general note first, okay? It turns out that transition metal metals can often form more than one type of ion, okay? So this causes um this causes a little bit of of an issue, okay? It makes them harder to name, number one. Number two, it kind of forces you to have a little bit of a deeper understanding of the periodic table, right? So some examples. Well, we've got iron, and we know it can form Fe2+, or Fe3+. Uh, there's also lead. Lead, it turns out, can form lead 2 plus or lead 4 plus um let's see off the top of my head if i can think of any other ones um chromium chromium is interesting uh just give me one sec yeah chromium we just had to look it up but chromium um cr can either form a 3 plus or a six plus, and a few ions ions even have um, more than just two uh, possible ions that they form. Okay, um, why do they do this? That's fairly complicated. Why this happens is 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 beyond this course, and it's got to do with um, basically with quantum physics of of the electron shells. Okay, why this happens is for future study. When I say future study, I mean like, yeah, university level stuff. Okay? Why this happens is for future stuff. What we have to know, what we have to do is we have to be able to recognize what ionic charge the metal has. Okay? So the skill we need to get out of here is if we were just given, you know, some ionic compound to look at uh, and we're asked to find the charge. On the cation, oh, we haven't talked about the word cation yet, have we? I'll introduce you to that nomenclature in just a second. So, just before we move on, new word of the day is cation, and cation is just another word for the positive ion. And there's two ways to remember this. One, the T looks like a plus. Cation, T looks like a plus. Or some people like to say, you're going to laugh at this, but cations are pussy-tiv. Huh? Two words for cats. Cat, pussy, positive. Cations are pussy-tiv. Or you could just remember that the T looks like a plus. Oh, that works too. Cat ions are positive, P A W. <laughs> uh, and then the other, the other one is um, anions. Uh, what do you mean? Right. It's the same. It's the same meaning. Um, depending on the situation, um, um, yeah, cathodes and anodes have the same sort of um, meaning except usually uh, like in an electrolytic cell the cathode is what cations are attracted to and the anode is what anions are attracted to so cathodes are sometimes positive depending on the situation okay um, yeah say that again why is it called a cation Great question. I am not sure. Cat probably has some root in Latin or something that means positive. Maybe. I'm just guessing. I don't really know, though. Sorry. No no good answer. So if I say find the charge on the cation uh, in the following. Here, this is just a little aside to remind you of this. I probably should have told you about this earlier, but whatever. Find the charge on the cation in <clears throat> the following. We'll do a couple easy ones and a couple hard ones. Um, 
How about... Okay, so here's a few examples. Let's find the charge on the cation in the, in the following. So we've got iron with oxygen as FeO. We've got Fe2S3. We've got CrN, and we've got CrCl6. All right? And what you need to do is you need to figure out what is the charge on the cation in each of these situations. Are you okay? Do you need a different chair? Okay. Uh, so if I look here, the way that I'm going to tell is I'm going to have to look at the anion, okay? Um, anions are nice in that they don't really change their ionic character. They're not like these guys. They don't flip-flop between two states. They're always the same thing. So we're going to base, uh, base our um, investigation, I guess, or our determination, investigation, on the anions. Okay, so anions are, are always the same. So base our investigation on the anions. So if I look here, I've got Fe, I've got O. Well, I know O is always a 2 minus. So in this case, what does the charge on iron have to be? Positive. What? Oxygen is always 2 minus. So if I look here, what does the charge on Fe have to be in this guy? Yeah, it's got to be 2 plus. Exactly. Okay. So we've just figured out by looking at the oxygen what the charge on the metal has to be. Okay. So let's go on to the next one here. It's a little more tricky. So here we have iron and we have two of them. Okay. And we also have three sulfurs. What is the charge on each sulfur when it's an ion? What does it have to be? 2 minus. So there's three of them, right? So what's our total amount of negative charge here? Yeah, six negative. Now we have two irons, because we look and we see there's two of them. So if there's two of them, what does each iron have to have the charge of? Positive three. There, you just did it. Perfect. Okay. So in this, in this compound, iron has a charge of plus 2. In this compound, iron has a charge of plus 3. Okay? Let's try the chromium one. Okay, so you got chromium and you got nitrogen here. In a nitride ion, what is the charge going to be on the nitrogen, on the nitride? So there's five electrons around it. So if we add three more to fill the shell, three minus. So there's only one chromium. What does the charge on the chromium have to be? Got to be three plus. There you go. So this chromium has a three plus charge on it. The point of this will become clear in a minute because we need to know this in order to properly give these things names. Okay. So last stage here. You got a CR and you've got six chlorines. What's the charge on a single chlorine? What's the charge on a chlorine always in an ionic compound? Single negative, right, good. Now we have six of them, so we must have a total negative charge of six minus. So, what does the charge on chromium have to be in that case? Six plus. You got it, okay? So you do a little detective work and you can always figure out what the charge is on transition metals, okay? So with some detective work, you can always figure out the charge on a transition metal ion.
cation. Cation are po cations are positive. I like that. That's a new one. It's probably not that new. Did you hear that before, or did you make that up? You just coined that? That's a, that's an original. <laughs> Someone must have said that before. Must have. Uh, okay. Um, but what do I want to say now? Um, Okay, let's try this. Try to find out. Um, let's see here. Okay. Can you figure out what the charge is? on MO in this situation and in this situation. Okay. Here are two situations where molybdenum is partnered up with an anion and you need to sort out or figure out what the charge on the MO would be. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a second to work on that. Okay, let's look at uh, molybdenum. Man, that's a hard one to say. I think I'm saying it right. Uh, with four nitrogens attached to it. So let's look at the nitrogen first. Nitrogen has what charge when it's an ion? Three minus. And we have how many of them? Four. So what's our total amount of negative charge involved in this? Twelve. So we've got twelve negative charges. And over here, we've got three MOs. And we know that these three MOs have to have a total charge equal to 12. So they must exactly each have a charge of 4 plus on them. So what we just have done here is we figured out this MO in this <clears throat> compound has a charge of 4 plus. Okay? Good? Let's look at this one. Similar concept. Total of 6 negative charges. We have 1 MO. It must have a total positive charge of uh, plus. Okay. Will transition metals ever form negative ions? No. Um, metals always form cations. No. Period. No comma. Let's just get the no out of here. Go away, no. Metals always form cations, okay? No matter what kind of metals, okay? Transition metals can form multiple different cations, okay? And you, as a detective, have to figure out which ones we're talking about, okay? I'm going to stop that there.